Hey everybody, it's Dive Girl Dab. I got a box from erigging.com. <laughs> Where are you looking there? There's, there's some neat stuff in there. And another little box. Ooh, Wi Fi smart camera. So, this is essentially. Um, a Wi-Fi camera that um, will show me what's going on with the boat and it's got um, let's see two antennas uh, indoor outdoor infrared uh, has a microphone um, has LED lights illuminate uh, four piece array of LEDs so you have four uh, white LEDs a TIFF card um, it's not terribly big. It has a speaker. Hey, bad guy, get off my boat and don't take my chart plotter. <laughs> um, so it's ultra far infrared. Now, the thing about that, I, the reason I bought it also is that I'm planning later to put it up the mast um, and to look forward so that it'll find like cargo containers at night and things like that. Um, so this is not just for security. I'm going to use it on the boat um, later. So you can take pictures. Um, it does record everything up to the cloud so I can see it before and it'll actually um, track people. So that is going to go on the boat next because I <clears throat> want to make sure everything stays. So e-rigging. Um, I've been looking around at different ropes and stuff, and you need to re-rig your boat every 10 years. This boat's been sitting for 10 years, so I don't trust any of the rope on board. So I did go and buy um, some nice stainless halyard um, fasteners. So I'm going to do some splicing and uh, make up my own lines. And I'm going to get this out. So I added up all the numbers that I needed in terms of rigging. And as far as my main sheets, everything is supposed to be 3 eighths of an inch. Um, I need 240 feet. So I'm going to have an extra 60 feet. I figure that will give me two, you know, 25 or 30 foot um, bow lines for tying off so it's a good start um, so this is going to replace all my main sheets for the jib and the mainsail and um, I, I need good rope in order to try to stand up the mast anyway um, and I did also buy <clears throat> a couple of these these are floating um, anchor winch or uh, winches winch handles and they're lockable they're not expensive. Right now I'm just focused on getting some quality products on the boat that are going to do the job and get us sailing safely. Um, doesn't have to look super pretty just yet, but I'm going to have new lines on the boat everywhere. And then, because the Pacific Northwest has a lot of <clears throat> really deep um, waterways up there and deep canyons, it can be really hard to anchor with a hundred foot of line. So I went with 250 feet of half inch um, anchor line and um, this is plenty strong for that little boat. It's a 30 foot boat. I just going to work great but I want enough road that I never have to worry about like in a storm of not being able to lay out enough um, road. With 250 feet I'm probably going to take some of this off, actually, and maybe use some of this for a couple of dock lines, maybe 50 feet of it. That still would give me 200 feet, which is probably twice as much as most boats are carrying my size. So, yeah, good start to um, our new venture. A couple of goodies that I got today. Um, yeah. That's really exciting. Oh, and then I also bought some of these. Um, these are um, cake decorating bags. And these are really great for doing um, uh, fiberglass work. So I got a hundred of those. 
Um, and then, of course, I got a pile here. I cleaned up these windows and already had some um, butyl tape. And I've got some of this kind of a butyl, butyl flexible rubber sealant. Uh, I'm going to just put those windows on. I've got a little quandary here because this is the original window frame. This is the acrylic windows that came off the boat, supposedly. And those almost line up. <laughs> they're, they probably would fit, but they're kind of long here. And then there's these glass windows, which are great. They're tempered smoked glass. And I think those are supposed to go to the pilot house, but these frames don't fit that at all. So I'm thinking that somebody somewhere was going to do an upgrade. Um, and if I got to make some wood frames for these uh, glass windows, I like those a lot. I think I'm going to work on that. Um, but I like the glass for the pilot house. It'll be nice to have some glare protection up there, I think. Oh, let me show you the drop boards. So these are the drop boards, and, and they're just so beautiful. Look at this wood. It's absolutely stunning, beautiful. So I went through, and I just kind of lightly sanded stuff. You can see here, there were some areas that are a little dark in that. So I just kind of lightly sanded stuff. Um, I did, And it's a wet sand that I did, and so I'm going to put another coat on them. I'm concerned because the grain is kind of sticking up on this a little bit, which tells me they didn't get quite enough material. And then for the framing, I need to f build the frames that everything drops into that goes around here. And I have this cherry wood that I actually grew on the property, um, and I think I have enough of it that I'm going to use... Um, to go around this. This is really beautiful wood. Um, and I've got more of it here that I can cut up in the shop. Um, and I only need about four or five inches, so these boards are going to be just about enough to build framework that goes all the way around that, so I can drop those boards in, and then that'll help to be able to lock that door down the road. But, um, I don't have any mahogany, and I don't have the budget for mahogany. Um, I love the idea of having cherry next to it. It's a nice hardwood. It's tight grain, um, very well cured, and um, I can run everything. These are I'm probably going to run through my uh, planer and just skim a little bit off of them and even them out all over. Um, some of them have a little bit of mold and damage. Um, this one's got a little bit of a split that's forming, and so I'm going to epoxy that and clamp it up and um, give it a chance to have some more lifespan. But these drop boards are just absolutely gorgeous. Drop dead gorgeous. They are beautiful. And I am asking for help on this question because inside of the um, well inside here, there's a bolt. And that goes up to the um, tackle system that drops down into the floor. So basically it's kind of a block and tackle system and it goes into the floor. So I'm thinking that I might want to do a traveler like this um, right in front of that entry door, which I really like because then that frees up the, the cockpit here. Um, or I'm considering maybe doing a traveler on the stern here, um, actually one like this. So my boom is 12 feet long, um, so it's not as short as um, some of the ones look like. So it comes basically from here right up into this area. Um, I'm gonna go out there and, and take a picture of it and think about it, but I kind of, I'm, I'm thinking to go to a setup with a traveler um, is maybe what I want to do. So if anybody has insight on this um, in the best way, so I just, I don't like the idea of the block and tackle right here 
that, you know, is always going to swing out. When I could put a traveler basically right across here, you know, in this area instead. So if you guys have insight in that, um, you know, I'm also thinking about, you know, what if I did a traveler that came up and over this, um, I don't know, this, this tiller area here, or a traveler right in this area. Um, so if you guys have insight on this, yep, see, I'm talking about maybe putting one there, but then I've got the tiller to deal with, which is probably why they put it here, because there's no conflict. Um, but, you know, maybe right across this area would be a good one. Because the mast step is right here, so that would be a setup that would be very similar to this array. And I, I like that idea. Okay, guys, if you have any insight, let me know. So a lot of these companies, the way they work is if you buy enough, then they give you free shipping. So I went ahead and bought a couple of different sizes of some nice stainless shackles. Um, these are the halyard lines that I uh, made up, that I'm going to make up. So um, I think these are going to work out nicely for what I need to do. Um, I did lose one of the split rings already for one of the safety lines, so I went ahead and bought three as a backup. But I'm sure there's going to be a lot of that coming over the, over the years. But I'll just start building up some inventory of some things. And um, yeah, I'll sit and splice halyard lines, so I'll have some really nice Good quality lines, they'll all match. The boat will look nice that way. Uh, a couple new handles for winches, and of course, security camera with some cake decorating bags. I mean, how many people would do a video with those things in it? You know, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> but I'm really happy about this rope because we got 300 feet and 250 feet of anchor line. Um, that boat. I'm looking at a 45-pound uh, anchor. I've got a um, um, a couple anchors out in the garage already. One's really big enough for this, but it's a fluke anchor. So I'm going to try to get um, probably a plow-type anchor. I've seen them already for sale around 100 bucks here for a 45-pounder. And I think that's what I'm going to start with. It's much larger than the boat needs, but that's really exactly what I want. Um, I don't trust the Northwest because we have such big storms here and such big tidal exchanges that I want to be prepared. And, um, you know, 250 feet of anchor line is a good beginning. So, all right, everybody, that's the latest. I've got to go out and put a security camera on. <laughs> that's good because it's going to, um, you know, if I have Wi-Fi in the boatyard, I'll be able to um, get that to work. Um, it has its own batteries on board, but I can also, of course, attach it to the, the house batteries um, on the on the boat, and those would be topped off with solar. I was going to buy one of these cameras with a solar panel, and I started thinking about it, and I'm like, no, because I'm going to put solar on the boat, so um, I'm not going to worry about that right now. And if I have to go out to the boat yard once a month and put fresh batteries in the camera, I'm okay with that, too. Um, that's fine. It's, I'm going to be going out there all the time anyway, and I'll pick it up and drag it home and work on it for a while and then go and put it in storage again. But, um, yeah, this is exciting. Yeah, I can make up some nice halyard lines and um, get the boat properly rigged. And with these new winch handles, I'm going to be able to take the boat. I'm going to go over to one of the schools while they're closed and use their big parking lot. And, um, I will strap the boat to the trailer for that. Probably don't need to, but I am. And then I want to raise the mast and um, see where all the lines lay and get a, a good idea for how everything's going to lay out, get some pictures. And, you know, power washing of the day is really helps because you're going to go over every single inch of the boat and learn it intimately, which I need to know. So when you when you go through these little projects like this, it just teaches you so much about the boat. It's great. Okay, guys. So, all kinds of new stuff. Um, and I've got more on the way. I haven't gone crazy yet on buying any big stuff, but just little stuff like this. Things that are essential 
to get her in the water as a motorboat first and just tour around as a motorboat and we'll talk about sailing later but um yeah definitely wanted some new lines and a big anchor line at that okay guys i'm dive girl dab love you guys bye bye